Hello everybody, Tate Davis here with another album battle for you. This one's kind of a wacky one. In one corner, we have one of my favorite bands of all time, Bad Company, Desolation Angels from 1979. Right here. And then in the other corner, we have in the uh, realm of smooth jazz, one of the great all time smooth jazz albums, one of my favorite smooth jazz albums, Grover Washington Jr. with Wine. Awesome. So let's talk about the Bad Company one first because this was uh, released first. So released on uh, Swan Song Records in uh, 1979. Uh, this was the next to last uh, studio album for them with uh, Paul Rogers. Um, after a little bit of a slump in sales with the Burned Sky album, this one um, was a big seller for them. Look at this album cover. Uh, this album cover, by the way, was designed by Hypnosis. Um, Aubrey Powell and Strom Thurgeson, the uh, company that was uh, famous for designing a lot of classic album covers, uh, Dark Side of the Moon, uh, UFO Obsession, uh, Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy, along with others, and uh, this one as well. This was actually named after the Jack Kerouac novel. Uh, Desolation Angels, and I don't know. I really, I always really dug this album cover. Uh, I guess Paul and the guys kind of look a little bit silly, you know, kind of fixing the car and everything like that. There's a gas station out in the middle of nowhere, but uh, this album cover gets a lot of shit from people. I actually like it, like it quite a lot. Um, uh, they were uh, being put, the, you know, like I said before, they were on Swan Song Records, uh, the record label that was uh, started by Led Zeppelin and Peter Grant. Um, besides Zeppelin, Bad Company were the one were the band that they pushed a lot. Um, other bands on Swan Song included The Pretty Things and uh, Detective and uh, and a few others. Um, but Bad Company was the one that uh, got the most notoriety and sold the most albums besides Led Zeppelin. So. Enough about that. Um, the personnel on this album, um, Paul Rogers on lead vocals, pianos and guitars, Mick Ralphs on uh, guitars and some keyboards, uh, Boz Burrell on bass and backing vocals, and Simon Kirk on drums. Um, the always dependable Simon Kirk on drums. Um, opening up the, uh, the album, we have Rock and Roll Fantasy, which was the big hit from this album. Great anthemic song with some great guitar synthesizers. Great vocals by Paul Rogers on that, especially the breakdown, um, the, uh, the great, great solid time keeping by, uh, Simon Kirk, um, especially the way that he accents the, uh, the accents in that, uh, that breakdown section I mentioned earlier with the, with the crashes, with the, uh, crash symbols there. Um, and then, uh, continuing on side one with one of my one of I think the long lost bad company gems uh, crazy circles awesome awesome folky ballad type thing with a great acoustic guitar solo by uh, by I think that's Mick Ralphs um, great vocals by Paul Rogers one of my favorite bad company songs gone 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 the other hit from this album written by Boz Burrell great great song with a great Mick Ralphs riff <laughs> Uh, Evil Wind um, is another uh, great song from this album. And uh, um, with some uh, very catchy, um, really hard driving, mid tempo rock tune uh, with some great vocals by Paul Rogers. And then closing off side one, we have Early in the Morning. Life goes on. I'm not sure if that's actually the lyric or not, but uh, Early in the Morning. Um, Great, great uh, kind of ballady type tunes. Some great vocals by Paul Rogers. Um, flip with the vinyl side too. I think probably one of the weaker songs on the album, uh, written by Muck Ralphs. I'm lonely for your love. Um, I like it. I don't like it as much as the other songs, but uh, nonetheless, it's very catchy. Oh, Atlanta, another one of the unsung Bad Company gems. Um, probably most remembered for being redone by Alison Krauss uh, a couple decades later, but uh, um, 
Bad Company's original version is so great, especially the guitar solo by Mick Props. Take the Time, another folky ballad tune in the style of Early in the Morning. Catchy, really good. Uh, Rhythm Machine, kind of a silly tune, but it works, in my opinion, on here. Um, again, really catchy, great vocals by Paul Rogers, a great little uh, drum break by Simon Kirk there. And then, in my opinion, one of my favorite Bad Company songs of all time, She Brings Me Love, kind of a Motown-type tune, um, uh, in the style of maybe like Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Overall, um, this is easily, easily a top three Bad Company album for me. Um, this, uh, the self-titled debut and Straight Shooter are pretty, pretty damn spectacular. Um, though I, I pretty much like all of their albums, uh, from the, from the Paul Rogers era. You know, Bad, you know, Burned Sky is spotty, very spotty. There's some great, great, great songs on there, but, um, overall this is one of my favorite Bad Company albums. And, uh, not a knock to the Brian Howe stuff at all. I really enjoy the Brian Howe stuff, but, you know, that's kind of a different band there. Um, it's when Brian Howe goes to sing the songs from the Paul Rogers era that I'm like, eh, I'm not sure if I quite enjoy this, but, uh, the, the original material that they wrote, uh, for those albums, I think are, are very fine. There's some very fine songs on those albums, but, um, yeah, Desolation Angels from Bad Company, a great album. And, uh, probably after the first two, this is where I'd tell people to start. Over in the other end of the ring here, we have in the uh, realm of smooth jazz, we have Grover Washington Jr. Um, Wine Light from 1980, released on Electra Records, produced by Grover Washington Jr., Ralph McDonald. Uh, all sorts of people play uh, play on this album. Look at this album cover. This is just, I, I mean, it, it's simplistic, but yet it works so well. And, you know, the saxophone and the, and the wine half, you know, is full and then it's, you know, almost empty. Awesome. Awesome album cover. Uh, you know, all sorts of personnel play on this album. You have Grover Washington Jr. on, you know, all sorts of saxophones. Um, Steve Gadd on drums. Uh, you have a couple guys playing keyboards. Uh... I'm sorry, guys, I should know the personnel, but I, the personnel escaped me. Uh, Robert Greenridge does play uh, steel drums on Just the Two of Us, and Bill Withers does the vocals on uh, Just the Two of Us. So, um, overall, six tracks, not a very long album at all. Opens up with the title track, Groove and Groove and Tune. Uh, very catchy, very melodic, um, very simplistic drums by Steve Gadd. Uh, great saxophone playing by Mr. Washington Jr., um, Let It Flow continues on. Again, same thing. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, In the Name of Love. Great, great, great song. Very catchy, very grooving. Uh, Take Me There over uh, on side two. Uh, great, uh, kind of a, maybe a little bit more mellower than the, the songs on side one, but very funky. Uh, Just the Two of Us. Great, great song. Great vocals by the late, great Bill Withers. Um, great, great um, uh, steel pan playing by uh, Robert Greenridge. Um, I was actually in a steel pan band in high school, and we did this tune. Um, so that brings back great memories of that. And then uh, Make Me a Memory, Sad Samba closes off, closes off the album in uh, great, catchy fashion. You know, here, the, thing I'll, the thing about this album and, and smooth jazz albums in general for me is that a lot of the songs just kind of bleed into one another. Very enjoyable listening music if you just have a couple people sitting out on a deck on a hot summer evening. You know, there's a cool breeze and uh, cool breeze and uh, um, you know, looking up at the sunset with uh, the hues of orange and purple and pink and everything like that. Um, if you look at the album cover, I mean, it this is very indicative of what you're going to get. Um, you know, it's a very romantic album and a very sexy album, if uh, that makes any sense. Uh, but it's a great album. And in my opinion, this is the album that uh, maybe not invented smooth jazz because Kenny G was going to be coming, was going to be putting out albums a couple of years after this. But uh, this is the album that probably, um, if one 
were to say, oh, what was the first smooth jazz album? This would probably be one of them, I would say. Um, but yeah, my favorite, one of my favorite smooth jazz albums of all time. I love the drumming by Steve Gadd on here. So when it comes to putting these two together, um, this is actually a very, very tough decision for me because I like both of these quite a bit. I mean, obviously they're both completely different genres of music, but, um, I don't think I've gotten a chance to talk about these two albums yet, and why not put them against one another? Um, not by much, but... You see, I love this. I really do love this. This is a great relaxing album that um, I can listen to, to to get away from things. Um, but but I, I just love Bad Company so much, and I love this. Um, so Bad Company is gonna get it, gonna win this match for me. Um, it's not close, you know. It's maybe about here, but um, for me, when you have songs like Rock and Roll Fantasy, Crazy Circles, Oh Atlanta, Evil Wind, She Brings Me Love. I mean, I, this is this is tough to beat. But you know what? This also has just the two of us and the title track on it. So you know what? I'm gonna give this one to Bad Company. But if you ask me in a couple weeks from now, I may tell you this. But maybe nine times out of ten, I'll tell you. So, Desolation Angels is going to win this one for me. If you like this one better, uh, that's fine, too. Uh, this is just my opinion. Um, the beautiful thing about these album battles is that we can uh, talk about these and, uh, um, you know, see which ones that we like better. Um, yeah, I, you know, I like doing these uh, really wacky album matchups, uh, you know, with uh, by artists who are completely different and, uh, um, have, you know, do completely to do two completely different styles of music because it's just I you know I don't see a lot of other people talking about albums in this way and sort of comparing them and when they do do it they always do it in you know with other artists in a similar genre or something like that and you know music to me is just music um, different types of music are meant to be enjoyed differently so you know like I said these album battles are just an excuse for me to talk about the albums in my collection that I love. Um, and for me to share them with you. So, uh, with that being said, uh, you know, go listen to both of these if you haven't yet, and uh, report back in the comments, tell me which one you like better. And uh, I'm gonna be doing more of these in the future, so don't you, don't you worry your uh, pretty little, pretty little faces. So, that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you guys later. Bye bye.